in the second game up against Team Liquor. Let's see if they are correct. We're going to leave it with our cast of potential for the final time today. It's going to be Odie Pixel and Fox. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game two, ready Prepare to go between the battle. two of them as uh, Liquid and ourselves into place for the second <laughs> game. Fog, well, what do you reckon from this one? We're getting up much more standardized draft it seems from uh, liquid no no support pango this time it's just run it back for mud goals pretty much just a couple changed heroes here but overall kind of similar style just a little bit more you know lena's a little bit more different because you're not playing as this initiator that just always is there but they have the earth spirit which acts as that initiator instead and immediately off here with the smoke level one looking for mickey Trying to get themselves a nice quick first blood start. Their level, the level one draft of Team Liquid is one of the weakest drafts. So that's why you see them smoking up here on the side of Mud Golems. They have a Morphling and a Chen. These two heroes do nothing level one. Similar with DK. So they're trying to scout the lanes, trying to get, trying to get a little here to get a kill. Battle. Yeah, you can almost you know, feel that Liquid, they're aware of this themselves with the way that they're grouping yeah. up, keeping four of them down here and Mickey hidden in the trees. They know that Mud Golems was going to be looking for that sort of play and they'll make sure that they don't fall to it. I actually gotta go glancing through Team Liquid's um recent. Yeah. I don't I don't remember recall them playing Chen in quite a long time, and also it's Taiga playing it, which I, I think Insania played it a few times in the past, but I, I swear it's been the like five begins. months, maybe more, since I've seen them play it. Unless I'm just mistaken right now. You want moves? Tiger's gonna be able to make down bottom. Bada should be able to get this kill here. The damage, a couple more right clicks. He's got a fairy fire. I mean, it, it, he actually survives. Okay. It saved him. It, it saved, saved him. him. Fairy fire, boys and girls. That make sure you got one. So yeah, fodder able to make sure no first blood's gonna be given up there. Yeah, I'm still going back. I'm at four months now. I still haven't seen a Chen on Team Liquid. Going through all their history. They have not played Chen in a, a very long. Yeah, I'm at five months now. So they haven't played Chen in five months unless I'm totally blonde and it just passed my eye. So sometimes this hero can be a little bit more difficult to play with. So we'll see how they're going to be able to run it. Because it is Taiga playing it as well too, who's usually the four position. They're kind of swapping things up a little bit here. Some of the other lanes we've got mid. Brony Alina against the Quake for DK. See, he no. skilled stun. See, we saw Bloom earlier. He didn't kill the stun versus DK. Barney, he's going stun and he's messing with these last hits. Yeah, it's, I mean, just interesting to see both, you know, obviously both very high level Mate. mid players, high level Lena players, just taking different approaches. But uh, yeah, I've I got to say that personally, I, I feel that I see more success when we do see someone take the stun as, as Boronia has done, as, as opposed to, as you say, when we saw Boom and he opens with the 2 0 1. He did miss his range creep last hit, though, because of not having the Dragon Slave, because he went for a stun harassing. But yeah, that's the kind of the trade off you have to just you play around this. So it's very, it's very just player dependent how I've seen that it's taken its. Radiant's top tower top. is under attack. The Taiga, he's got a... Oh, he's got the Dream Creep, and they're actually getting aggressive onto 33. Can they kill him? Oh, God, the self. If they get him. Very, very nicely done there. I mean, that's a big one for Mickey. First blood in the south, down the drain for 33. And it's a big slip up, too, because, you know, Milan, he was pulling the wave back. So 33 just overplayed his hand, staying up too far. He just he just gets right clicked and chased down and dies. Pretty big mistake there by 33. Taiga, as we said, he did find the best creep, at least for sustain in the lane. As you see, Mickey, look at that Morphling. Just love life. 15 HP per second, pretty much. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty, that's, yeah, that, that's amazing with the ball. And the mana regen, that's the other thing yeah. that people always know, it's like that 2.5 mana regen, 1200 radius, this creep is pretty, this creep is pretty OP, let's be honest here, it's been like that forever too. They will get the wow. kick on Mickey, but he gets the wave for mid kick. 33, just trying to mess with Tiger. You get this, this creep control around with the pull. Autumn, Ooh, remnant off the mark onto Fada. We'll be able to disengage. And now Boxy getting turned on. Be fine. Pulse giving you a little bit of a shield. Protect him against those right clicks of the Spectre. And top 
33 is able to grab the big wave there. A very juicy one here. Be able to take that back to his half of the map and farm it up without any interruptions from Tiger and Mickey. Okay, Mickey, not, he doesn't have to spend money on regen. Tank the creep under the tower. You've got a forest, or uh, the hill troll priest. Just keep healing you. He's going to be topped off the whole time as this morphling. So Mickey should be a pretty free lane for him. Well, bottom, yeah, I mean, you get her getting pressured a little. Top, okay. Tiger coming in behind the towers here to try and play with 33 whilst he's cleaning up this pulled wave. This is the new lane positioning here. As <laughs> Very aggressive here, yeah, sort of bringing the lane route. And oh no, rest in peace, Hill Troll Priest. It's been eaten. It's and been Tiger. eaten. Uh oh, he's kind of far up oh, here. Oh no, he might, he might be a drop himself now. That's Tiger. And he will go down there, able to roll in. And Tiger goes, as well as the same time down bottom. Also losing Boxy. Fado able to snipe him out with a few purifying flames. And now we see, of course, yeah, like you said, now he's got the troll creep. He can heal himself up on 33. And Milan, he got an urn actually delivered already because he was able to farm that whole first wave that he pulled behind. He's now got charges. So 33 fully sustained in lane. They can stay up here without having to spend money on regen. And I guess we're, we're sort of with just that small camp to play with, like the the, the RNG no that you actually money. get out of one of those hill trop priests is uh, it's not great, right? It's, no. You're gonna have to get pretty lucky for a spawn to come in. Yeah, Tiger again. They're rolling on him. The urn charge. It's gonna be enough damage. He's gonna go down here. Back to back deaths. He's got no TP to go back out to lane to help Mickey. Heads up plays for Milan the toward giving him all that information to make the move. And oh, maybe get courier. Oh, one oh, H two. Did it, did it go down to one? It, it went didn't to it? one. Yeah, it went oh. down to one. He did 99 in one hit. Oh. All right. Bounty runes secured on the top side for mud golems. We need just a little bit here in these first five minutes. We are seeing Koifa try to take advantage of the movement from Borani here. And he's got a decent level advantage on this deacon over the Lena too. So it's good folks on the tower with the catapult wave. No rotations coming in from Mudgolins to slow this down either. Barney just trying to do it on his own here. Radiance middle nice tower. Nice to nuke down Sorry, the creep waves. Push. At least away for the tower a little bit longer. Bottom lane. Trying to move it on to Insania. Remnant off the mark now from Boxy, but the lift up will slow down the two of them. Turn over towards Boxy, but the fade bolts out. A little damage being done in fact. Sparta, he's, he's holding his ground. He's ready to... Let me try and fight into this, but Boxy, one more pulse. Still, these raindrops keeping Fada safe. Fada's fine. Raindrop, the most ridiculous item in lane, as we've been seeing throughout this tournament, especially. Just everybody always having them versus these double nuke lanes. Boxy and Fada both what using top? them. Top. They're the rolling on Tabike. Ooh, that's a good attempt from Milan. And that the stun and the silence. He actually is nearly able to find that setup on a Mickey, but Mickey, just enough HP to, to play with and. He'll live. Under the gun now, though, as Taiga, he has to kind of walk away and just jungle because he can't actually walk back toward top. Now, Boxy, too, looking for Fada, but Skeeter's getting free hits on him. And they already yeah, got he, he can't commit any further for Fada. I mean, Fada so still has a much range drop. He's got a Fortune's End to back up here with the mana. Can't quite get in range, though. Gotta be a little worrying for Liquid that, again, we are seeing a game where the Spectre, I mean, he said we slowed down a little bit, but... Getting involved in two kills already in the lane, it's, it's not as good of a start as last game, but it's not necessarily a bad start here for the Skeeter Spectre. No, oh, 33 actually messed up the bolts now. Milan was trying to pull the lane back. He messed that one up. Mika, he has the Ogre Frost Mage, so he's got the Ice Armor under the tower. Pretty tough to kill. But they do have a lot of bursts coming in. If they can get the Silence, they even have the uh, Chain Lightning coming in from 33. So Mika's got to keep himself at a little bit higher of a Strength Morph here at 19 right now. Doesn't want to just get popped by the burst. Oh, so, and sort of eyes on uh, Tiger as well, as you said. Definitely going to be interested to see what he does this game, yeah. considering he's playing a, a hero that you say we just haven't really seen Liquid do. I mean, what what do you sort of expect is going to be coming out from Tiger in this early game? Like, what, what's his game plan? Uh, it's it's usually uh, what, what I see with the chances. I can usually just touch him off of puppies. It's just, you just farm. You play the farm game with okay. the mech. And then you just move your carry around to the farm location so he can save his TPs. So if, if Taiga wants, he can walk bottom to find favor Mickey, and then he has TP available to go to other places. He can also set up around mid. That's another thing that he can do because he does have a DK. So he should have a mech at a pretty decent time, and they can't set up for these group pushes. 
of Rune Spawn. Here's up top. Very lucky for Blinding here. Because he has a full bottle, full full mana. And they're all set up around the mid lane for this DK. You wanted that. We're still there. Very hard kill. It's a fine quote for this day. It's double yeah. braces and treads. Yeah. Milan is going to be going for a rush to Spirit Vessel this game, and it has some real good usage versus both the Morphling and the DK. That's going to be real nice if he's able to get it at a pretty decent pace of this. Because he should, because he's had such a good start. Dyer's yeah. Uh, yeah, you look at the supports, obviously, will have that kind of god, but that, that's also going to be yep. restricted by that, and uh, no no ways of removing the, the, the vessel from the teammates, so. No. Uh, going to be an incredibly good game for him. Bottom box, he still has one astral step of the silence come in. Stun, oh, what a stun though. Baron here. A little bit off to the side there. Boxy might still fall. Those kids trying to stay on top of him. No, he's got another step. Boxy will live. Attention down. over to Wolf's Quake for him. Baron here is able to close the gap. Get another light strike right down. But Quake is still very tanky. They'll blow the Laguna. They're bringing him low. They're rolling in. Milan closes the gap. They've got just enough burst to do it. As Quake for goes down, that's an Elder Dragon form down the drain. Trying to punish 33 up top during it, but they can't. And Borning is instantly actually oh, TPing. Moves. 33 almost just threw the Doom down. He's trying to get the angle. Okay. Be he's careful, stay close to this. Borning is going to show now, though. Okay, knows what's up. Huge heads up play, though. That Koikfa's rotation with his Elder Dragon form just gets killed instantly Radiant down bottom. Tower I mean, he's, he's got to be careful. I mean, they, they, he doesn't want to fall foul to sort of the same moves as last game, as we no. saw, you know. His Invoker, first few moves around the map, he dies, his game gets shut down heavily. Uh, sure, things are a little easier for a DK to come back in, but it's still not great, right? You, you do want to be having that driving force of the DK, taking towers, pressuring early, early objectives. It's 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 pretty similar, honestly. Yeah, you can, if he okay. dies like a couple times, it's it'll look pretty disastrous for Koifa because they have the tools Radiant's to deal with him. They tower. have percent based damage attack. that's gonna come from the doom, uh, from the infernal blade that will come out eventually, and they just have high burst, and easy ways to pierce through that armor, and what looks will be a pretty early spurt vessel for Milan. So, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's gonna be the easiest for Koifa's. Mech is online now for Taiga, so it looks like they're grouping up. They're trying to get something out of this, but DK form is still on cooldown for 15. Should be able to hit it once they get to the tower though. Of them that they are able to make down. Eskida's got the whole good to go. Doom and Laguna also there. 33 and Boronia want to TP over. They do have their TPs up. The five fire off to the side. And the fortunes end though. And uh, he's still full HP. They're still trying to commit. Pops in with the second astral step. Quite for steps forward. But Fire's just buying so much time in it. Gets the false promise up. They're having to commit a lot to try and kill him. And at that time, it's giving the opportunity for Mokolans to come over the TPs. They do lose Fire, but now 33's been able to get him with a few drop down onto Boxy. Boxy trying to run with the magnet from Milan, they're hitting pretty much onto the entire team of Liquid. Boxy will go down. Mickey turns into the Lina form over towards Baronia, locks him down with the Light Strike Ray, dodge with the Wave Form, avoiding the Light Strike. Mickey will be able to find the kill on Baronia. Tiger to keep down low. Milan, he's just kept this going for the entirety of this fight. The horn out from Skeeter. Koifa is very low right now. Skeeter, is he going to be able to chase this? Mickey trying to stun, but Skeeter's able to step to the side, dodge it. 33, still just from the side, just spamming in these chain lightnings to keep them low. Not quite low enough to kill these members of Liquid off, so Lingu Liquid will manage to get the rest of them out of there. Dyer's top tower is under in a big shot. Look how much damage that Milan did with his Magnetize. 3,000 damage from the Earth Spirit. He used six stone remnants to keep it spreading, and even still, they weren't able to get the kills on, any on almost anybody. That was pretty big there for Liquid to press forward. Didn't get the tower. That is another DK form used, and it is a Chen pressure move that Mudgolems is able to kind of avert themselves Radiance with, and Skeeter is still is back to farming. I had yeah. just hit six also there, like literally as they were making the play, so ideal timing for them is farming and DK form being down means some passivity coming up with Liquid. Sort of. Play is, of course, going to be bring that up. Skeeter. Yeah, I guess Mickey is still happy to play. It creeps. Damn we saw already Mickey starting to get very involved in that early movement, joining the team uh, very early on in the game as a, as a morphling. Made all the difference, just allowing them to actually Radiant's have that damage. Those Q plays attack. turning into Boronia's Lina. Using those spells against them did give the, the opportunity for them to take those kills. We'll see about that. 
set up onto Boxy. TD, they've got the damage. Oh, well, actually, do oh, they know they don't? the stick charges. Boxy's actually able to live. Oh, oh my Boxy goodness. Earned. Put the urn on him, though. He's going to try and deny to Asians. He's going to be able to do it. Oh. Boxy. Dyer's middle tower. Very, very nicely done there with the deny. I mean, it, it looked like he was dead for sure. It looked like they wouldn't even need the Laguna. But they, they popped it, dead. and it still wasn't enough. Big plays there, and he gets the deny. So yeah. no earn charge re-established re for Milan. Is under Nicely done. Now Laguna's down too, so Mika is like, thank you. You ate the Laguna. Too much safer now to go out on the map. And yeah, every time that Mika does have his morph up, it does seem like it's going to be a pretty big deal because they also have the Rubik. So if they're both targeting Lina with spell steals, a lot of chain stun that they can actually get between these two. I love when I see morph and Rubik on the same team. So many different plays that they can do. C33, he already has the, the crucial the crucial step to deal with the Morphling, though, as his Doom. He's already got the Blink, and he's found his Centaur. So Blink stomps into Dooms will be likely to happen a lot of these time points. You know, last time, Box was in the front line, so he got Dooms. But Mick is going to be the Doom target in all of these fights. And they, it's just like last time, too. They have the Haunt, so the information is always going to be there when it's up. For 33 to pick and choose which target he does go on. Top lane, 33. Boxy. Hitting in the trees for now. Invisibility. Got a lot oh, of them on the same plan. He's gonna lead it in, they don't even need the Doom for this. Dyer's top tower Quick jump there. Dyer's Milan always just closing in, finding the angle for the silence. And he's actually opted to not finish up that spirit vessel, just not getting as much farm on the map as I think he expected himself to, and he's just gonna go for the veil. Really good with his team anyway, benefits for everybody. Instant smoke too, they still wanna make use of that doom. They, they still have a very good kill potential from that. 32's gonna come with the TP down bond and see if he can get quite for, for already backing away towards the river. It's unlikely that they'll find him here as Liquid aren't gonna have anyone show or move down towards that bottom lane. No pressure being applied to the tier two tower. This is a really cool approach by Boring here. I'm not sure if you saw this, but he pretty much has Lincolns almost on. He went boots to travel and he's just been going a farm build to just... If he's able to block like the instant lift or the instant dragon tail and he can reset yeah. in a lot of these fights, it can be pretty huge for him. I, I do quite like this. It's a very greedy style, but it's, it, he, it's already worked for 15 minutes. He hasn't really gotten punished for it. I got a thing as he jumped. him. And that's why we're seeing, you know, he really wants to get that Lincolns to protect because these instant jumps, they're going to kill him every time. That's all the concern about the leaders. Like we're getting some good tower. pressure on with the Dragon Pong. Quite fat. I'm going to keep him, his game just in a much better position. Paris, what we saw is game one performance go to at this stage. The objectives, getting these jumps. Oh, DD Mickey with a method. Oh, this is going to be a quick rush. A very quick rush. I'd yeah, there's, there's no way the Mud Golems could do anything about this one. Even if they Maybe start ahead over now, they're just not going to be able to get her in time. No, there's smoke. The blinks and blink will be on by the time they're I mean, there. Are they going to have an opportunity at the end? No, they're, they're not even going. Good old DD runes outside the Roche pit. If they didn't get the DD, it's, it would take them just so much longer. And then there is definitely chances for Mud Golems to have contested. Dyer's structures are fortified. I'm not going to try and take what they can from this bottom half. Also, no liquids all up there on the top. Tower being pressured and... and still, it, it, it's a very close opening here. 8 to 5. 1k lead for Mug Golems. Uh, but already we're seeing on the net worth some sort of similar patterns to, to what was coming out in game one. You know, the three cores of Mug Golems in good position. Uh, whereas for Liquid, it is... It is pretty much you're shifting all towards being on the back of this mall. This very early point. Again, going for this tri cross scale. That's how we saw Boring Ink hit go for this kill. He yeah. travels straight into Link. Man. He's going for farm. Jump in. Finish this off. They're going to come up with a hawk. Trying to come in for Koi for silence out from Lan again. He's landing these stones each and every time. They put the hand of God. Laguna's out. Koi for finally burn by the Dragon Slave from Boronia. They also loot boxes. Boxy just gets caught out by the, the Doom in the midst of it all. Maybe Asenia can try and set up for some plays with that. Oh, it was a little hard for him to, to close the gap, but the Kinesis could do is some uh, boulder on boulder action here between Milan and Mickey. <laughs> so they're just chasing each other around the map. 
He's ran out now, though his morph did run out, and Elon's gonna be able to outnumber him with the rollaways. There's a big jump there, two cores taken out. Even through that hand of God, through that mech, they have the damage. If they can get the jumps, which, like I said, it really feels like mud golems, they get the jumps almost every time with the well, Spectre, even if they're into yeah, the stages. Yeah, because, uh, you know, th th the thing is, we, we saw how good mud golems were with this sort of play before, right? Because th mm -hmm. they had the Spectre, they had the Doom, uh, they, they, they had these heroes to do it. And it, it, as I said, it's early, but this game could shift again into just a straight four protect one from Liquid, and they're doing that it against the Doom. It's under attack. Very similar. Doom, as well as a. I mean, yeah, I like, this is such a cool build. I, I don't think I've ever seen something like this. Like just bots into Lincolns. Can definitely do some real big work instead of going for like duels. It's, it's gonna protect sure. versus those hard stuns, and if he can reset away. It's it's gonna prove everything for him. Yeah. Or even just protecting Skeeter. There's just so many different things he can do with it. It's a really cool approach. And I think sure, you know, the, what you may be missing for the duels in terms of setup it doesn't really matter too much because he knows that he's gonna have 33 jumping in with the blink, Skeeter going in with the horn, or Milan. You know, I think what well, Milan with these moves, he's been all the initiation they've ever needed. As he's always in their first two, one, and six, he's had a, a very clean start and some smooth plays in the surf spirit in this early game. Yeah, just like it's just like that stone spirit, he's the initiator. If the jump comes out, it's stolen Doom. Actually, gets thrown out to Boron Ding Hit and. He gets he should go down. Slid. This man can set up for a deny on him. But I think they need to. False promises there. They're able to get Boronir back to base. He's safe. Quapa jumps in it. Very deep up to the high ground, but they'll be able to do it quickly. Liquid bursts down Fada. But Fada turning up, giving his life, and saving Boronir from the Doom. And it's just a five position kill in that whole downtime during Haunt and Doom being on cooldown. They can't actually get that big kill, and that DK form it's used. So they're gonna look to try to get more out of this here, but everything's gonna come back up here. Haunt and 20, Doom is up. Man, well, that was cheeky. He was able to roll past, grab the bounty rune. Is he actually able to live off the back of this as well? He is. He wants the next one. Yeah, he gets out, he takes the two bounty runes pretty much right underneath Liquid's noses. Man. If they are able to kill him for this, he's got another boulder. He's a he's away. Are they gonna get the kill on him? They're not. He's TPing out, and uh, just continue to be a right nuisance for Liquid, just stealing the two bounties and, and not even that. He rolled literally right in the middle of like three heroes. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets yeah. away with it. <laughs> All right. And now we have Haunt Doom back up. So Liquid, they tried to get something big out of those being down, but just getting that five position. Got to keep their lanes pushed in so they can, you know, make mud golems not get the most out of their their big ults. So bottom is pushed in nicely, top and middle are. So liquid lanes in a good spot, even if they do lose somebody here to this these ults. Elon has to be a little bit more conservative with his stones now, as he did have to expend a lot in order to get away. Only has two more here. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Two supports show mid just now. Shen and the Rubik both showed themselves. Radiant's they might look to make a play, Mud Golems. Is under attack. They have Radiant some information now, finally. Jim Very close to having the Lincoln's. Radiant's bottom tower is gone. under attack. Suddenly got to be a little cautious before he does get it finishes. Elixir are up. Doom, Laguna, and Haunt ready to go. Mud Golems up on the hunt once more. So they smoke oh, up. They're gonna get him right before the Lincolns. Mickey has to be very careful with his positioning here. So close to it. bottom tower is under attack. They're already starting to move him away from this bottom tower. And Tiger's still around though. This is a this is a nice move, Mickey. Just going into the safer place to finish off his Lincolns. It's gonna be done. It's coming out. It might save him here. 33. Getting in position. ready to check those items as well because they they might jump yep. before they realize it's there see it now silence what's the matter they pop the lincolns and they set up for the doom and the doom is down onto mickey shifting up in strength but there's a lot of damage coming in and it's enough mickey goes down storm good side milan he's gonna be safe father's able to get the false promise up keep milan alive boxy's Radiant's trying to take down father with the combo will do so father hold boxy Turning over to try and help Tiger, but Boronir just punches down Tiger. The light strike away from Boronir, catching onto Boxy. He's got a jump available, but over to the side, Milan's watching. There's the vision for the burst. The purifying flames from Fada finishes them off. 
as they're able to make that jump there. Now, who was it that removed the link and someone did so perfectly? I think it was Purifying Flames, it looked like. I think Bata. it must have been, yeah, it must have been. So, it was must so quick, the animation, I didn't even get to see it. Yeah. Instant, instantly recognized, and definitely one of those situations as well that just shows how tuned in mud goblins are, because there's definitely been cases where Lincoln's been picked up, and uh, teams haven't checked before they made the jump, and that Lincoln's only just purchased, but they saw it, they knew it was there, and they play around it and get the chance to land the dupes down still onto me. Even when he gets like the Manta and splits and gets the confusion, they still get that yeah. quick doom onto him anyway. And from then, the fight looks so hard for Liquid. That's all their damage, really. Like the DK and the Voice Bird, the, the Rubik, they can provide some, but they can actually finish off many targets. And that was also Insania stole doom and instantly doomed the Spectre right afterwards. So he was zoned out of the fight a little bit. But Morphling dead, there's no way that Liquid can fight. Like, which, like you said, it's it's really just a 4 Protect 1 and now at this point for them. It's, it's turning into it. It really, it really is. And we, well, we saw how that story ended in game one. This one, definitely a lot closer. Now, quite for free example, it isn't anywhere near as far as out of it as he was in the first game. He's got the BKB done. Bottom lane, Mickey. Finds Father pushing out that lane alone. But they still got to be careful, Luke. But if Quipa's game slows down any further and it does turn you know, extremely into the situation where it's all about Mickey, it's just a lot of pressure. And... I mean, in comparison to game one, would you feel more confident if you're Liquid putting this game on Mickey as a morph? Are those sort of shoulders Radiant's in comparison tower. to a troll, as yes. we saw in game one? So yeah, say, what, just safe from the morph? It, it's like his, it's one of his most comfortable heroes. Like yeah. when, Liquid, when Liquid's struggling and they put Mickey and Morph and he's having a good game like this, there's a lot of times when he can carry it. It's going to be a very tough hill to climb, though. Versus, he just versus so many counters, natural ones too. The Doom and that Lino, he's gonna be a huge problem for him. And I'm seeing the itemization 33, like he even builds himself a four staff. So yeah. another Lincoln's breaker, just in case he doesn't have the backup of his teammate to break it. Setting themselves up for success, Liquid. Gotta make use of this here, as they're still pretty big and there is a fresh BKB now on Koikpa, so he's a lot stronger to stick onto this Lino. Haunt is now back up though. Everything is back up ready. Okay. He's stepping in, jump forward from quite for quite for. Fantastic, going to be blocked by Link is onto the side, Milan's it. The Hawks out. They get the silence on a Boxy. Boxy jumps over to the side. Quite for side to put the BKB. Boxy is trying to take out Fada. Fada is up to the side, but they have the vision. The sentry drop down. They'll kill him off. Stolen Doom down onto Skeeter. The Skeeter's able to kite his way out of the fight. He'll back off out of this. And so far, just Boxy for Fada. The trade that's gone on. DK form is used, and BKB was used too from Liquid, so they're really trying to force something here. Now they're going to start getting chased out. So, uh, 33 actually four staffed himself. He tried to blink four staff onto the Morphling, and it just things got too jumbled Radiant in the midst of it. He actually forced himself away rather than getting the Doom off. Same Roche. It's up in a few seconds. Very, very close to being up. <laughs> Both teams, I mean, I guess actually looking at the two, you, you would still play them Mud Golems fight around the pit when they have their ults up. Yep. Like they're, they're, they're always just, they're always going to be stronger when they have their ults up. Liquid has to make moves when they're down, and right now is that move. There's no, their Doom is available, but that Laguna as well as that Haunt are on cooldown. They can't, they cannot let Mud Golems get this Roche. 30 seconds left on that DK form. Foxy is back to the back to the fray. But this rush is gonna start dropping fast. Yeah, they're, they're gonna make moves quickly. Sending in the sensor. Got up the situation. Foxy's ready with the jump in. Set things up with the sensor stun. Remnant pull back on to Skeeter. My golems themselves, they're not they're committing here for the rush. They're waiting out to the side. Manta on cooldown for Spectre, he's waiting for that. He's a little bit low on mana too. Scorch Earth on cooldown now. Foxy throwing remnants for vision. Just about to move Boxy. He's in, gets the science onto the three, then Dragon Tail stun onto the two. 33 is falling low, lifted up as well. The life rate is Thrown down onto Koifa, but the stage there for 33. False promise in play. 33 still alive for now. Roshan does continue to fall low over to the side. Mickey's going to be looking towards Pymalam. 33 pops the BKB. He's trying to get away from them. Foxy's chasing him down. Still has the Doom ready to pop if he sees an opportunity, but he's holding onto it. Mickey comes to the stop. They break the linkers and then slam, they slam him out of the game. Roshan goes down. Age 
just will be snatched by Koi first. Skeeter's able to get the cheese though. He's back up the full AP mid game, buying back to try and help Koi here in this fight. He's in on the Baronia. They take down one. Koi getting low, but they've lost Koi for ages and they've lost boxing. Buy back from Baronia. This is a risky fight for Liquid. They pull back on Mickey. They cannot allow a morph to die, but the horn's up. Skeeter, he turns straight away onto Tiger. Tiger taken out by the illusions on the side. Yes, Baronia, sorry. the light strike. He lands it perfect onto Mickey and onto Insania. Beautiful re-engage there from Barney as he comes back into the fight with the box and he lands what, what may just be a, a game-defining stun there onto Mickey. That's a dieback from the Mickey morph. Oh yeah. my, that was that was beautiful the way he did it. He TP'd on the mid wave and yeah. goes for the Dyer's flank from the, the side that you just would never expect it. Dyer's he gets the perfect stun. Skeeter gets the cheese. He's able to use it and turns the whole fight. I mean, just some of the ways that Mud Golem's playing this team fight, it, it, it just seems so hard to deal with. The, the, the patience as well is from 33 in that fight. Lots of opportunities to Dyer's drop down a bin, but he was saving it. Dyer's he was saving it right up until when Mickey tries to go in. He just makes sure that he's got that doom every time for the all. Does the job. Mickey's down, had to buy back, and now they're ready to fire up into the high ground. They're trying to bring down Skeeter, but Skeeter pops the Manta and he's away. The land turns to the side, it's on to Boxy. Dirty room, slides down, daggers out as well as the Laguna. Boxy gets the double with the pulse off, but first is too much. They lose Boxy, they are able to take down Milan in turn, and Senior coming in hot with the stolen Laguna. I think they got to back up. They did their damage. A little too risky to stay here. Bounties are going to be spawning in 30 seconds too. And yeah, there's big hits here coming out from Mud Golems. As back-to-back -back deaths on Mickey. He just, like you said, just hard for him. He's just 33. He just has his eyes on him. He knows. Who cares about the DK? Who cares about the Void Spirit? He already doomed Void Spirit two or three times in this game. Now it's all about Mickey. Yeah. Mickey has to play so careful. Oh. And yeah, waveform onto the aggressive high ground. Really punished him. Up. The boarding, yeah, he's a fun. Oh, get him. Take the Lincolns. The save from Fada. Buying time for Boronir, and he's actually able to walk out with the Shadow Blade. They don't have detection. Well, they had sentries, but Boronir with movement speed far too fast to get out of range of any detection. Insane, it does jump in. Sentry down. Boronir. Again, just keeps his distance. He is away. Fada just honestly always at the right place at the right time. His saves have been, even last game, you know, like we mentioned, Morning only had the one death on Storm, but that was all thanks to Fada saving him like three, four times in this game. Yeah. Again, Fada pulls out these situations, saves 33 in the pit, just saves Morning hit. All of his fall pro false promise just perfectly on point. They have to find ways to get him on the back line somehow. It's, it's all up to Bach too, because he's got that ag in him, so he I mean, has that, to jump in in the back and get these silences. Because that's the thing I was going to ask you. I mean, it's another game, Boxy, 4-9-3. and three. He, He's dying a lot. It, 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 how does this sort of make you feel about this ag's rush that we're, we're seeing him go for a second time this series? I mean, it, in this one, it can make a lot more sense. In the in the last one, it hurt him a lot because they were versus that Orchid Storm. But in this okay. one, I can understand like, it's so much better versus Oracle. It's like the it's always the best option. You have a you have a built-in gap close and you have a built-in AOE silence to prevent these saves. So but you are dying a lot because of it. You can't keep yourself safe, right? Yeah, it's usually just better to have the Yules. I mean, he's going for the big plays. He's going for the further the big aggression, but it's definitely hurt him a couple times. Dyer are scanning. BKB done on Boronia now, so... Now less likely to be burst here by Liquid, as Liquid have tried their best. I mean, they've taken him down the three times, but honestly, we're really seeing just uh, another excellent performance from Boronia. Some of those moves, of course, around that last Roche. Buy back and play. It's, it's just it's doing everything here for Mud Golems as... The second game in a row, they're looking to be this just well-oiled machine. Liquid, you know, not out of this one by any stretch. Is that they're just down to 3k, it's just, it is that risk. All their power, again, pretty much lying on Mickey. And they, they have got single target. They've got single target, lockdown, burst on, on the side of Mug Golems. It, it, Mickey has to be so careful, one slip up and, and the game can just end. Yeah, it's tough for him to really like jump from targets to targets either. Milan is so mobile in the fight, so he can't actually just stick on that. He he has to try to find Fada, it feels like, because the three frontliners are just too tanky for Mickey. Like Borninghe, like you mentioned, he's always able to get away because of the build that he's gone for here. Can't focus fire the Doom too well. And Spectre is just not an option for you to go on ever as a Morphling first. Tough game for Mickey.
As yeah, mud golems, they don't, this downtime is just phenomenal. They just chill, they farm, finish up their next few items, and then it gives them time for all their ults to be back up and ready. Very impressive that both games, Mud Golems, all three of their cores, they've just always been as farmed as one another. You know, there's, yeah. there's no slipping behind. Uh, it just seems that every part of the game, you know, regardless of sort of how it's going, because like this game, for example, where we've seen the early positions, Liquid making moves and Mud Golems getting, getting held back, but they're just not losing out on farm. They're, they're just never falling behind on any of their carries. No, it always really does help when you have Doom. Doom doesn't have to show himself in lanes to farm. He just eats a creep and he's matching that farm from the, the talent. You know, 320 bonus gold per, per thing he devours. So it gives the Spectre and Lena a lot of places to just farm. And yeah, great distribution of wealth for sure. Yeah. I mean, from, from these two games so far where, where Mug Golems have, have managed to get the, the Doom out and the Spectre twice. I mean, if you had to sort of pick one that you think teams are going to be looking at the series and saying we should really think about i mean which of the two would you consider the bigger issue i honestly think it's the specter the specter just enables the doom too much in the fights it just it's like halt you see everyone yeah. on the map and it just like 33 pick and choose your target and uh you know there you go i feel like it just makes the game a lot easier for for the whole team to play and it's, especially if they do have that like one hero that can start the fight pre blink dagger it looks so good right with the earth spirit this game storm spirit last game you haunt and then you you always just have options even pre blinks Continuing to grow this, grow this lead. Sticking at 3k, but getting some big items to deal with this morphing. Now a shield is also for 33, so more, more heal, more heal removal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's even harder for Mickey to dance around these fights with the shift. And we're seeing it just with Mickey's itemization, he just he, he has to do everything. And he's got to get himself a satanic so he doesn't get burst and also got to get himself a silver edge because somebody needs to break this spectre you know, everything is it yeah. feels like mickey just has to buy all the items and he, i don't know if he's gonna have the time and space for them no quite for definitely wishing he had a gpm talent or something that is dk still pretty no, useful for him those have been gone for a very long time as trying to get themselves out scout the rosh and i just had yeah cost just actually messaged me he goes spectre oh, yeah, just bought a drum a fourth item drum. Yeah, no, I saw that the, the two of them did that. 33 as well. His uh, his drum only came out about five minutes ago. Uh, so both of them buying uh, very late on in the game drums, uh, the two cores. Or maybe just really just favoring those active usages when they are just grouped up in fights. It is insanely yeah. strong when you pop them, but very interesting to see that. Thank you, Lacoste, for just pointing that out too. Because I just, I, I looked and I was like, wait, six charges a drum on Spectre. What the heck? Oh, he's gonna have Scotty finished up on top of that. Yeah, just being as slot efficient as possible. Yeah, the bunny wants to make sure he's got some, you know, each bit of his inventory, each bit of his kit's doing something for him in that moment. And the drums does certainly fill that hole. Sure. I mean, they're getting all the items to counter the Morphling. They have the vessel, they're gonna have, I have Scotty finished on Spectre, and they have oh, the, the Sheepas on the Doom. Oh, Milan. Finding Boxy. Quick sweep and Boxy's gone for a full minute. Really just it really just feels harder and harder. So many different forms of dealing with Mika. And yeah. they don't care. I feel like they, they literally just don't care about any of the rest of the heroes at this point on Mud Golems. No, it's uh uh, it's all about Mick and, and, and this game, you know, as farmed as he is, it, it's not like he is as, as sort of far ahead as he was in comparison to the trolling game one. Yeah. But this game, it's it's, 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 true, it's a couple of K ahead uh, in that one, but Mod Golems, their three carries, their three cores are, are all totally fine. Scotty's done for Skeeter. Roshan, it's, it's going to be up in a minute and a half. So Mod Golems can look wait it out and play for that. I don't know how Mickey's gonna handle these team fights. Like I was saying, they they literally have the, the trio of items to counter more flank. Perfect here. Spirit vessel, Scotty and Shiva's no heals for you. Also gonna counteract a lot of the Chen heals in the fights too. So at least have solar crest. Yeah, they at least do have a couple items to buff up Mickey. That is the one good thing that they do have, and he does have an illusionist cape as well. 
you know, does he get doomed or does he not? It's really going to be the case in a lot of these fights. Yeah, and so far, you know, 33's track record on the Doom has been pretty good. Mm -hmm. Has been finding those Dooms. Sandy also finishing up a full Aghanims, too. So they're still finding a good chunk of fallout and supports, too. One place up. I'm going to look to Horseman. And Koifa, he, he is on the cliff. We'll see if they can punish this as Koifa... He's going to have to blink up in a second and he'll be able to get his way out of this. Skeeter charging in onto Tiger. Tiger's down. And now with the buyback as well, looking to join over. They'll turn up with Koifa. Koifa's got the BKB, but so far in here. Warren here just holding his position. They turn with the Suns onto Skeeter. Wait for Ford from Mickey. He's looking towards 33, but 33 with a full stop. He's off to the side. 33's going to win. Okay. They turn on to Mickey. Mickey is just going to control down. He needs to help Mickey. Can they do anything to save him? The Doom is there. 33 again, finding the opportunity to Doom them all. Skeeter falls. Most of the dispersion is killing them off. Skeeter does go down, but Boronir is looking to Insania. Insania with the stolen life strike stops Boronir with the chase. Milan looking at Boxy, rolls away. Boxy is falling low, he does manage to get some big kills on the way out, but it is on the way out as again. And of course, no golems. They'll take the team fight. It was a it was a very expensive, very expensive team fight. Four buybacks from Mo but Golems though. They're gonna get the Roche for it though, and Liquid, they're late to buy back on this one. This Roche is gonna die before they get there. They're gonna have Age of Chiefs and the Aghanim's Blessing now. Roshan has fallen. At level 25 on Skeeter. It's all picked up. Liquid, they're trying to get into the pin. Mikke. He's still heading in. He's looking towards this. They're dusting down on Barney. They're jumping in for him. Can they burst him? Barney is gone. They, they got him. That's a big one. Barney is down for two minutes. Mo Golems, they've got to make sure they don't lose anything out there because Liquid, they can take down another one of these cores whilst they don't have buyback. A huge window would be opened. They don't have to catch. The rest of Mo Golems get away. And they come back and they do punish the one hero that didn't pick up anything from that Roche. She did pick up the Blessing, but not picking up that Aegis or anything. They get that one kill. They're going to have to make a lot out of these 100 seconds, though. Because yeah. as soon as he's back up, you know you know Mug is going to punch back it's incredibly attack. hard. Well, absolutely. And sure, you know, we, we saw in that fight before the Roche, Mug Golems, yeah, they used the four buyback. But now, they quit in an attempt to, to threaten that Roche, which they weren't able to do so in time because they weren't quick enough. Attack. They've used the three buybacks themselves as well. So both teams' cores in a very vulnerable position now. Down Just the fact the Mug Golems, they have that Aegis on theirs. On Skeeter. Tower. They might be able to get a Rax here, though, Radiant's because it doesn't, the Mug Golems doesn't have anything at their tank, so this one should drop. Tier Radiant's 2 are up in the other lanes, though. Under attack. Radiant's middle barracks. That big opening cool. for Liquid. Time poke for Bomb. I mean, 50 seconds, they know the Barony is not going to have buyback. Okay. They are, they're going to keep this push going. They're gonna force Mug Golem's hand. I think he just has to go for the fight. Yeah, he's gonna start charging again. Milan off the side gets the sun down of the two. The Tiger's falling low. 33 jumps in the front of Blade down at the Tiger. Tiger gets the hand of God out. They kill Milan. Milan's come down. Mickey's turning towards 33. 33 points the beacon. But Mickey's still with it. The damage is there. He kills on 33. He's over towards Skeeter. Skeeter needs help and he needs it now. They're ignoring coming in with a buyback. They are. They're ignoring the Spectre. They go after the game. End. They take the tier four. The ancients explode. 33 jumps in with the Skeeter. He linkers his post on the Mickey. Holds out. But Mickey, he's just ending it. He's just hitting the ancients. Look at the close this one up and Liquid, they're gonna be able to do it. The dude's oh down, but it's too late. The game is over. Liquid 